This video shows how to replace the bushings in the support arms of the Chafer and Civ frames of a John Deere 6620 combine. This view is looking in the back of the combine. The top arrow points to the Chafer frame and the bottom to the Civ frame. They move independently. Several sections of fingers broke loose from the sieve in this machine. It could be seen the wires holding the fingers were excessively worn. One cause of the excessive wear is bad bushings. It has been suggested these bushings be changed every 1500 hours. This parts diagram shows the support or swing arms for the chafer frame. There are four arms, one on each corner of the frame. Bushings are shown in red and are pressed into each arm. The left and right side are the same. So five bushings are needed for each side, a total of ten for the chafer frame. And this is the parts diagram for the sieve frame. The rear arm uses four bushings and the forward arm uses two. In some later models, there's an extra bushing in the forward arm. Notice also a bush in the pitman arm. Again, the left and right side are the same. So for the sieve frame, you will need either 14 or 16 bushings. The total for both frames, 24 or 26. This is the left side of the machine. Access to the chafer arms, large arrows, is easiest on this side, so start here. Remove and replace one arm at a time so the frame is supported by the remaining three. The smaller arrows point to the pitman arms. The left drives both frames and the right goes to the rear sieve swing arm. This shows access to the heads of the bolts on the inside of the machine. Note that all nuts use a 15 16 inch wrench except for the four one-half inch Allen wrench bolts in the chafer frame. Once the arm is removed, you can knock the old bushing out with a hammer. Note the top of the arm is marked before removing. The orientation must be maintained when reinstalling. If the bushing is stubborn, it may be easier to remove with a press. Here are several of the old bushings. Also, we replace bolts with excessive wear and reuse the good ones. The bushings are available from John Deere or some aftermarket suppliers. The original number was AH80384. This was replaced by AH154. 697. We tried several different ways to install the bushings. This inexpensive press worked the best. Installation was quick and easy. Notice when installing the bushings, one side of the arm is beveled to ease insertion. The service manual says do not use grease or oil when installing the bushings. We used water with a touch of dish soap and it worked fine. Once the two chafer supports are done on the left side, move to the two sieve supports. These are found underneath the machine. This shows one of the rear sieve arms. Notice the bracket, right arrow, that holds the center pivot bolt in place with two 3 8 inch bolts to the outside. The left arrow is the pitman arm. This shows the rear sieve support and pitman arm removed. Now move to the right side of the machine. The forward chafer swing arms are behind this large pulley. Remove the belt, then the pulley by removing these six bolts. Arrow. With the pulley removed, you can access the swing arm and pitman arms. This shows the right hind chafer arm. 
It's located near the back of the diesel tank. Removing the pulley for the chopper gives access. Arrow. Now move to the sieve arms on the right side. Again, like the left, these are under the machine. To access the bolts on the rear arm, remove the pulley on the tailings auger. Arrow. Behind the diesel tank with the tailings pulley removed, you can see the sieve arm bolt. These torque values are from the John Deere manual. All early models torque to 130 foot-pounds. After replacing the belts and pulleys, check the frames to make sure they're moving properly.